Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Now today, we're going to be having a look at this and fitting it to my Formula V2 rim. So this is the Fanatec Podium Advanced Paddle Module. Now what it gives you is some new paddles, dual clutch, some lovely carbon shifters. So we're going to fit that to my Formula V2 rim in this video. So let's get on with it. So let's get into it then. So this is the advanced paddle module by Fanatec, the Podium Advanced Paddle Module. Now, I, uh, I took this out of the big brown box uh, a couple of weeks ago now. So we're going to have a proper look at that. And this is what it's going to go on my Fanatec Formula V2. Now, essentially what it does, it replaces these paddle shifters that are on, which are just your standard plastic ones. So it replaces those, gives you a couple of paddles, and down the bottom it gives you a dual clutch on both sides. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm probably going to change these buttons as well, or at least take off these caps, because we don't need them on, do we? So we'll probably do that. So we'll pop that over there just for now, and let's get into the box for real. So inside we've got a piece of paper. As with everything Fanatec, it is perfectly packaged. Beautiful. So in here, uh, we have various shifter kits. Uh, so these larger ones, they're for the GT style rim. Um, yeah, I think th these two here. So those two are for the GT style rim. And these ones are for the formula rim, which is what we're going to use. So let's take these out now. At least I think they are. Yes, they are. And I'll show you how they sit. So essentially, they go like that. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but when they're on the back of the rim, they actually sit literally oh, that close to each other. They're really, really close. The tolerances are so tight. So good job, Fanatec. Uh, so also in the box we have some nuts and bolts. Can you see those? Will, will it focus? I don't know. So some nuts and bolts. And, which is what I like to see, is some tools. Tools. So I don't have to go trying to find my own sets of tools. Now, bear with us. This one's stuck. Let's take this out of the box so we don't drop it on the floor. Because that wouldn't be cool. So we'll use this one and we'll hook this bad boy out. There we go. Like that. So we get a couple of tools. So that's everything out that we need. We're going to pop those in the box because we don't need those. Uh, we don't need that. And we don't need that. So that can go over there. And this is the kit. So these are the paddle modules themselves. These are, this is the uh, analog clutch. And then you've got two shifters on there. I didn't realize it had two shifters. Um, very, very nice. Very nice indeed. So two shifters. And they have a rubber insert in there. So I don't know if you can hear that. It's actually a lot quieter than a normal magnetic shifter. So that's good because that's one of my pet peeves is listening to streamers with clicky clicky paddles that you can't get rid of. So that's good. So let's take this bad boy apart and get them on. So let's get this on then. So I have watched a video from the Sim Racing Garage of how to do this, and he made it look very simple. So if you haven't checked out the Sim Racing Garage, go and see. Uh, so essentially, we've got to take off this bottom cover here, and it's held on by these two screws. There's one there, and there's one there. Uh, it should be relatively straightforward to take off, and we do have an Allen key, so bear with me. These are like a self-tapping screw by the look of it. Um, 
not like a threaded engineering screw, more like a like a wood screw. Um, with quite a coarse thread on there. You can see that on there. It might not focus. Quite a coarse thread on there. So we'll put that somewhere safe on one side. We'll do the same on this side. Now, I've got hands like pig's trotters, as I have mentioned a few times. Uh, so this might be a little bit more tricky than uh, than Barry made it look when I'm actually getting the um, wires through the back of this, the rim itself. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get these. I'm going to pop them in here when I take this off. So that slides off there. So dead easy, dead straightforward. It reveals the insides of the rim. Now, I've got a habit of losing things. So I'm going to pu put those in there for safekeeping. And then we're going to take off the paddle shifters. Now, they're held on by two bolts. I don't know if you can see them in there. These two holes just, just under here. There's one there and then there's one on that side. So we're just going to take those off. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to take off these wires here. So there's that one and there's that one. They come off and then there's two other ports um, on that one there and that one there. Therefore, the advanced paddle module, you can actually see it on there. It says left and right. So there for the new advanced paddle modules now. Can I get these out easy enough? Yeah, so there's one. So they just, you just kind of jiggle them side to side. Try and show you the best way I can. So just jiggle them side to side. Try not to pull on the wire itself though. So that's them two off. That one there. Move that one over that side there. So they're off. So now we can take off the bolts on these sides and we should be able to then take off the paddles. Now what Barry did mention, which I'll mention as well, which is a really, really good point, And I think it's great by Fanatec that they've done this. So they give you this Allen key there. It's just an Allen key, but it's got a nice rounded end on it, she says. Uh, but you pop this in this hole to take off these bolts and you can see it actually clears the top of the rim which is good there's no clearance issues at all so very very good nice one Fanatec so undo these bolts should be straightforward is that off yet I think it is I'll do the same on there sorry you can't really see what I'm doing there that's almost coming loose. So we need the, the advanced paddle module on. Well, I need it on for the Porsche Cup car that I drive in iRacing. That's why it's important to me. So I'll take get rid of these bolts there. That's one. Is the other one still in there? Yes, it is. So the other one's in there, but we'll get that out in a moment. So now we just need to get this wire uh, through here without damaging anything in the circuit board. So we're just going to be very careful that when we get that out there, there's a small hole at the back where it comes out. So that's one out. We'll just get this bolt out of there somehow. It's kind of trapped, trapped inside. We just need to get that out somehow. It's trapped behind the wire there. There we go. So we're going to need that to put it back on. Although I think this kit does come with spares in there should you need them. So that's one. We'll pop that over there for safekeeping and we'll do exactly the same on this side. So the holes, uh, sorry, the bolts are just on the bottom there. So I'll pop this in and I'll show you exactly where they are. Uh, so there's that one there. Literally just... Loosen it, and then the one, the other one, sorry, is is right next to it. When I can, there, the other one's right next to it. There, is it? Yes, it is. So we're in. 
We'll just undo these the best we can, he says. I want to come loose that one. No, you can't really see it, but I've got to hold it towards me so I can see. And it's just exactly the same process as the other side for getting it out of. Actually feels a bit rounded there as if it's not gripping hold of the, the Allen bolt. But it's possibly just me. I think it is. Yes, yeah, it's out. And that one is out as well. So again, it's the same process. We're just going to carefully feed this wire through. He says, there's a bit of a kink in it there. We'll be careful with that. Twist it round to get it out. So there's the other one. Out, done. And then we'll salvage these two bolts. There, so that's four bolts. So now we've got a V2 formula rim with no paddles. So let's get these ones on to replace it. So installation of these paddle modules is exactly the opposite of what we've just done. But we need to figure out which one we need first of all. So hold the rim towards you and then get one of the paddle modules. And the clutch should be at the bottom okay so the clutch clutch wants to be at the bottom um with the shifters at the top and the clutch needs to pull towards you in that direction so that means that that one there would sit on there like so so this is the correct side for what we want so uh barry mentioned that um a little bit of a clearance issue with the bolts in there. The bolts go in the top. Uh, just don't even see that there. There's one hole there and one hole there. And this wire kind of blocks the bolt from where you put it in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to preload these small Allen bolts in there. First of all. Um, and then we need to figure out which is up and down. There we go. So that's the correct way. So we need to hold these bolts in. Um, now, we need to try and get rid of some of this wire here because it is quite long. And then we're going to feed this back through this hole at the bottom there. Through all this gubbins inside and then poke it out of the bottom. That's, that's the plan. That's the plan. So we're in. We're in. Now, can we twist it? round so it comes out the end that's what she said well, I can see it there it is there poking trying to come out there we go that's popping out there she said sorry I should stop doing that really stupid innuendos very childish um so I've pulled the wire back in there now I need to, I don't want to mess with the wires inside too much. And there's a bit of a twist in it. So if I can twist it round, there we go. That should work. And it does. Right, so we need to make sure that we're the right way around now. So that goes like so. And then we'll try. Get the wire in the little aperture there. Little gap that's been made by Fanatec. If I can get a little bit of cable in out of the way. God, I'm making this look hard, folks. Pull the wire back in now. It's still there, though. It's still there. Right, let's try and get this in there now. Right, so that's there. Is the wire in the hole? Yes, it is. Right. So now what we need to do is nip these bad boys up. I can see them. There we go. Just, just see them. I 
that's one. They don't have to be very tight these at all. And then again, that's doing what we thought it would do there. Don't know if you can see it or not. But here, the wire, oh Greg, is actually blocking the top of the Allen bolt. So I'm just gonna have to try and figure it out just to for a moment. And get the Allen bolt in if I can just push it to the back. There we go. So we'll just tighten that up. And it is tightening. Seems to be a long thread. Oh, I was getting worried there for a second. That's tight. And that one's tight. So that's one on there. So all we need to do now is connect this connector on to where it says, a, what does it say there? I can't see it. APM right. So obviously advanced paddle module right. Now Barry gave a top tip. Uh, on these wires, you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, there's a, a side with the metal uh, connectors on that you can see. And on the other side, there are none. Well, the metal connectors face that way. So we'll try and just click that on there. I should really put some glasses on. I do wear glasses for reading. But that's on there. Uh, there is quite a bit of wire in there. But that's one side on. And let's just repeat it with the other side. So there we go, that's them both on, both sides. We need to attach the paddles. But first of all, we're gonna put this case back on there. Don't like all these exposed wires. So that just slides on like so. And then of course, we have these Allen screws that go into the front of the wheelbase. So we'll just put these pop these back in. And these aren't really threaded, they just make their own thread when they bite into the plastic. Again, they don't have to be really tight at all. There we go. Nice and covered. Right, let's get these paddles on. Now, they are countersunk, these holes on them. I don't know if you can see that there, but they are countersunk. So they can only go on one way. Now, the larger ones will go in the middle, and these ones will go, I don't know if you can see that there. They will go in the middle, like so. And these larger ones, will it go that way? No, it's that one. We'll go like that one. So put those over there. So it's these ones that we need. Right, let's find some screws. Now there are two types of screws. Bear with me to rip open that. So there are two different screws and there are some spaces. Now, if you've got huge hands, then you may well need to space these out. I need to try and get some screws. So there's one there, one there. That's three, four. So we're gonna need four, but there are some longer ones. They're five mil long, I believe, but there are some that are six mil long. Six mil, drop that one there. There are some that are 10 mil long, sorry, there. And they have these spaces that slot on the end. Can you see that there? So if you do have bigger hands, then these can, the spaces can sit behind the paddles and just move them away from the rim, uh, just to give you a little bit more clearance. But we'll pop these bad boys on right now. So there we go, it's that side there. Pop one in first of all. 
So you're probably not getting a good view of this. There's no easy way of doing it because my hands are going to be blocking your view. So bear with us. That's going in there. I won't tighten it right up because obviously we need to pop another one in. Magnet grabbed hold of that one there. Again, these don't have to be tight at all, really. Just, just snug it up. Just, that's all. So that's that one on. Where's the other one? There it is. And we'll do exactly the same with this one. And we have two here. So again, I'll, I'll load one in. And the same with this one. Stuck to the magnet again. I need to hold it in place whilst I pop it in there because it will just pop out. Damn, I had to try so hard there not to uh, come out with another innuendo. Again, just nip that up. There we go. Beautiful. So we've got two individual paddles there and you can see how close they are together and then we've got the dual the clutch down at the bottom and then two paddles on there very very nice indeed right we'll, we'll repeat that with the other one but i won't bore you with that one we'll come back when it's done so there we go all done it makes it feel much beefier than it did before i mean these are metal obviously these so it does add a little bit of weight to the rim but i don't know what you think but i think that looks absolutely superb really really nice the feel really nice the distance from my fingers i don't know how far it is probably around two inches just right uh, i can't wait to get on eye racing and set up this dual clutch i've been missing that since I've got the Fanatec wheels, I've been meaning to get this on for a, a couple of weeks now. I just never got around to it. But there we go. That is the advanced paddle module for the Fanatec V2. Now let's get on the computer and get it dialed in. Right, here we are then in the sim. Now we're going to have a look at the properties page. So you open up your game controllers in Windows and then select Fanatec Podium there. And here we go. So this opens up the Fanatec Wheel Properties page. Now you can do everything from here. Uh, if you haven't already, you can click Update Firmware for your wheelbase, your motor and your steering wheel rim. But we're just gonna look at this page just for now. Now you can see on this image there that the advanced paddle module is now installed. You can see by the images now if we click on the right hand side you can see in the top left corner what i'm clicking so this top top one here so if we click that you can see here where my mouse is that's clicking and then the one below and then the same on the other side so we we've got an extra paddle shifter there um now the analog clutches you can change those to what you want to use them for so there is a, a selector on the front of the V2 wheel rim there. So we'll move that all the way over to the right. So that says there, mappable, mappable analog axes. Now this, that's for, at the bottom of the properties page, you can map those to whatever you want. And then the next one along is brake and throttle. So if you look now on this section here, you can see the brake and throttle. So there's the throttle, the one on the right, and the one on the left, is brake and those are analog obviously and then we'll go one more click and that is clutch and handbrake so the one on the left now is the clutch and the one on the right is the handbrake but the one we want is the one right onto the left which is clutch bite point now you can see both of these now 
operate the same analog signal or whatever you want to call it the clutch so we need to go into the sim to set this up how we want it and we'll do that now right here we are then in the sim now this is where we need to set up the dual clutch so what we're going to do we're going to get out on track where it's straight and then we can set them up properly and i'm going to show you the best way to set them up or the correct way because i've seen a, pe a few people demonstrating how to set up a dual clutch and it's incorrect so turn the engine off for now right so you've got two clutch paddles and essentially what i've seen people do is they're telling you to pull both clutch paddles in and then when you've got it in gear release one and then when the lights go green you then release the other one slowly the one on the left hand side but then that just acts as a normal clutch and you may as well be using your left foot that really doesn't work at all so what you need to have set up is you need to have when both paddles are in you've got your clutch is fully engaged and then when the lights go green you release the one on the right completely that can snap open like so that could just snap open and when you do that you will have set this paddle to have a certain amount of clutch slip so when you release that one the car will start to move forward slipping the clutch when you've got forward momentum then you can start to release the one on the left hand side slowly and um, that's the correct way to have a dual clutch set up now i'll turn that off so to set up the dual clutch on the fanatec you pull both clutch pedals in paddles in on the wheel and that then gives you your number so at the moment you can see it's 100 now to adjust that you release the one on the right but you keep the one on the left held down so you release that one on the right and then you press down on the hat switch there the joystick then you can dial that in to wherever you want it now if we put it on 100 i'll just show you what it does to, to store that number you then release the one on the left so i'll show you what it does when you have it set at 100 so you pull both it's in gear pull both paddles in you can see the the number there is 100 we accelerate fully nothing's happening we release the one on the right again nothing's happening right now we want that car to be shooting forward if we then release the one on the left slowly that acts as a normal clutch and as long as you let it out slowly it will work exactly the same as a normal clutch paddle uh, pedal so to set this up you pull them both in release the one on the right then press down on the switch then that then enables us to then adjust so what we're going to do now is we're going to accelerate uh it's in gear we've got the left paddle held down so then we'll adjust that until the car starts to move so you can see it's moving there now still a lot of clutch slip so we'll have it on 70 okay so release the one on the left to store that number and then if we pull them both in it should say 70 yes it does so now this is how you would start so it's in gear pull both paddle so it's in neutral both paddles first gear rev the engine when the lights go green release the one on the right but you can see it's not really moving we can release the one on the left to, to uh, kick in the second part of the clutch but that was slipping far too much that's not getting you off the line in a hurry so we need to adjust it a little bit more so we'll pull both paddles in release the one on the right push down on the stick so we'll try 60 so to store that number release the one on the left just double check it press them both and it says 60 so simulate that one again so both paddles in first gear rev the engine lights go green release the one on the right so it's moving a little bit better now then release the one on the left so that is moving a little bit better than it was right now so we'll get round the first you can and then we'll we'll do it again we'll we'll adjust it once more so we'll put neutral so we're on 60 so we're going to adjust that now so hold them both in release the one on the right push down on the stick and we're going to drop that down to 50 let's see what that's like so to store that number 
release the left paddle. Push them both in just to check it's on 50. So we're going to simulate a start now. So both paddles in. First gear. Foot flat down on the floor. Lights go green. Release the one on the right. That's a little bit better. Then slowly release the one on the left. I'll show you that once more. It's still not biting quite enough for me there though. So pull them both in. First gear. Full gas. Lights go green. Release the one on the right. Slowly release the one on the left now. There. So we've got it off the line without any wheel spin. But it's just not biting enough for me. So we're going to go down another 10. See where that takes us. So we'll just get round onto the straight. So we'll adjust them both again. So pull them both in. It's at 50. Release the right. Push down. And we're going to go down to 40. I think this is probably going to be a bit too much. So then we'll release the left to lock that in. Press them both. It's at 40. Okay. So clutch paddles in. First gear. Foot right down. Lights go green. Yeah, too much. So we've got wheel spin. That's with the one on the left pulled in. I'm not releasing the one on the left. Foot right down. Too much wheel spin. So that's no good. So try that once more. Adjust it. Release the one on the right. Push down. And we'll put that number up to 45. Release the one on the left. Double check that they stored it as. So both paddles in. First gear. Foot right down. Lights go green. That's a bit better. That number is at 45. We'll try that again. Both paddles in. First gear. Accelerate hard. Lights go green. So as soon as it bites and starts to give you some forward momentum, then you can release the second part of the clutch. So that felt actually quite good, that. So it is just trial and error and finding... A number that you're happy with so can we go down any more so release the one on the right push down we'll go to 43 release the one on the left push them both in it's at 43 so first gear hard on the gas clutch out now nah, wheel spin wheel spin so that's no good so we'll go up we'll go up to 44 release them both yet yeah, it's at 44 First gear, oh, hang on, first gear, release the one on the right, that's actually not too bad that, it's 44, I'll try that again, you've just got to double check that it's going to work every time, because you need consistency, so, both paddles in, oh, neutral, both paddles in, first gear, foot flat to the floor, lights go green, pull the one out on the right, then slowly release the one on the left. That actually feels really good at 44. I think that's my number. Either 44 or 45. I'm just going to do it one more time. Just to satisfy myself. So, neutral. Both paddles in. First gear. Getting ready for the green light. Lights go green. Let go of the one on the right. Mm. Maybe 44 is just on the edge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to adjust that one and put it on 45. Lock that in. I think 45 is the number. 44, I think, depend on the track temps, I think that's maybe a little bit too close to spinning. So both paddles in, first gear, put to the floor, right paddle out, green light. Yeah, it's round about that number. I'm going to have to experiment a little bit more with that, but I won't put you through that. So there we go, all done and dusted. Paddles on my V2 rim there, and as you can see, they look beautiful. Really, really nice. I love the gold magnets, the gold paddles, and the gold in that carbon fibre there. Really nice. Dead easy to fit. Two bolts on either side and one electrical connector. If I can do it, you can do it. Uh, would I recommend them? It depends what you want. The The paddles on the Formula Rim work perfectly. No problems. Never had any misshifts. Anything like that. No complaints at all. These feel good though. These feel different again. I mean, they're 180 euros to buy these. 
so they're not cheap. Uh, but they do feel really good. And if you do need paddle shifters, paddle clutches, sorry, dual clutch, then uh, seriously consider it. I drive the Porsche Cup card a lot, and you need a paddle clutch, paddle clutch, double clutch, sorry, to get the best out of it. So for me, it's worth it. Uh, 180 euros. There is a link in the description if you want to buy anything from Fanatec. I'd really appreciate it if you use that one. It gives me a very small commission. That's not the reason I'm saying that they're worth it, though. You either buy them or you don't buy them. It's up to you. But I think they're great. Dead easy to set up. Perfect. Can't wait to get on track with these. Um, there we go. I'll conclude it there. So thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Cheers.